running Timbersaw in the mid role. And so. We didn't see much of an Oracle. I, I'm not sure if he was banned out uh, mostly. The His numbers are good this patch. Yeah, the hero looks so good. One of the reason why he's so good because Root uh, stops the yes. and, like, and the hero and, hasn't been changed. He received the, just the tiny seconds, buff on his Q on damage. Yeah, and it, it doesn't. It doesn't. I don't think it applies to Oracle wow. too because it screws up the target. For a second, I thought it was. Due. Oh wow! Oh, this is a hero. I have. I have wanted to see this hero. I didn't. Didn't mention it, and I thought VP might have been thinking about it because un, uh, uh, PL is one of the classic counters to the Undying, right? But everybody stayed away from it. Even with uh, we've seen a couple first phase Undying uh, games this tournament where PL was neither picked or banned throughout the rest of the draft. But VP is going to, uh, Secret rather, is going to take it here, remaining. and they're going to do the classic, we'll pick the hero that counters our own. Yeah, so how, how many times have we actually seen the PL so far in this tournament? Want to say did, twice? Yeah, I think it was twice. So so many analysts saying, PL seems good here, but we, we don't see it. Now, in the grand final, we will see the PL. Oh, they, they will need the, some AoE because right. they basically have none with these three heroes, and they don't have... Uh, it, too much control for a Phantom Lancer. This Timber is going to create so much space because n none of these three heroes are good against the Timber. It's kind of crazy, right? Because the hero that Jesus PL counters Undying and a hero that counters PL are both already on that side. But this is, this is the response, right? When you're talking about, you're worried about melee lanes, you're worried about right. the other team having a lot of melee cores, this is where you go to that Monkey King. Yeah, this is probably the matchup that the they will want to have uh, Monkey King against Timbersaw. It's a hard matchup. Ten seconds Even though remaining. with the rotations coming, I I've seen these kinds of matchups where you have a hero remaining. just sitting at 35 to 75, 40 to 60, and just goes to a hero who has the worst uh, percent. So with the Monkey King on board, Surely it becomes more likely that Zai is going to be on the timber. Could be. Yeah. Right? I, I'm trying to piece this out because Secret, I think, despite the Monkey King laning matchup, was, which is a problem that we can get into uh, once we see the bands here, I think Secret lack teamfight initiation. Right? You really, wanted, you really want some kind of initiator if yeah. you're Secret. Yeah, I mean... Timbersaw is one of those heroes who can go in, try to do something, uh, get the focus on him, and then team reacts. But it's not it's not reliable. Surprised that the Centaur managed to survive throughout this pick and ban phase. Considering they already have a Timber and a Beastmaster, I assume Centaur is not gonna. Pick. Ten seconds remaining. I I like this draft because I think it's. Both lineups Five have, have obvious strengths and obvious weaknesses, right? You talk about Secret uh, until Blink on Rasta, which will come along a little bit earlier now that we all but know it's going to be Yapsor on the four position. Rasta. Um, they lack teamfight initiation, but you have a VP. Other than the Monkey King in the laning phase, I suppose with Monkey King's teamfight, it does offer a bit. He's going to build a Battle Fury, but they don't have the best illusion clear still. They could grab a, a Dragonite, even though it's not a bad... Best match ooh. against Timber who do you want draft? Who do you want draft for VP? Oh, I think that's ooh, I think that's really tough. What makes you not like that pick I mean, here in the house? You're playing I think uh, it, it it it's yeah you, you you have to worry about the laning matchups and I think as the game goes on, I mean DK is a hero that just he kind of gets swarmed by PL. It's not you know you know now that I think about it, it's not as bad as I first reacted. My apologies. I think that's. I think it's reasonable, especially with the taking the Kunkka off the table. Okay. That, that's wow. That's VP again. Swagger, confidence. Okay, you need a hero to deal with AOE. You provide AOE against the PL. We're gonna give you the mid one shadow fiend. And this, by the way, when I say I want to see mid one on more playmakers. Yeah, right here, right and, here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of a Shadowfin, Shadowfin in general because uh, he's patient. Shadow Shaman and Undying not the best at doing so, especially because it's going to be Shadow Shaman position 4. 
and the, the hero is slow, so you you're not uh, playing Shadowfiend into Earthspirit, which is the worst enemy, and they have enough stuns and uh, blows, controls to actually enable Shadowfiend to deal damage with raises. I I like it here. Still, what do you want? Do you want a three or do you want a two timber? Because three, I, I you think want a three. A, okay, I think they need a matchup. So you, Shadow. so it, all right, all right. So you want a ranged hero mid? Yeah. Can you just go do so? Um, no, Lena. Okay, right. this is not a hero we've seen a lot, but I. Oh wow! Oh mid one Lena. I think mid mid one Lena crushes this matchup. Not sure. He uh, well, I've yeah, seen I mean, him. There's going to be a rotation coming out from uh, from Earth Spirit, which is uh, way better than what was. Has and, yeah, uh, sick drafts from both of these teams, and uh, I, I would give a VP an upper hand in this one. Okay, you're giving VP an upper hand, but I want to ask right now: How does VP win with this lineup? Where do you think they're going to be able to take over the game? Well, they have a good Roche potential. The uh, our lanes are going to be strong. I mean, they, I think if they it's pretty. I think if they address the PL, they win. Because okay, right? I I don't think Secret has enough team fight to win this game if PL just doesn't get massive. But I think just watch that mid matchup. If if mid one goes off on this Lena, this this game's very winnable for Super. All right, our analysts are saying the mid matchup is going to be the key to success here. But let's kick off the grand final. Hell yes, Richard. We are definitely looking to kick off the grand final right now. And what a final it is! It's a final that you'll probably be very familiar with. Virtus Pro versus Team Secret. In KL, they face up against each other in the winner's bracket and the grand final. In that tournament, though, it went the opposite direction. It was actually, it was uh, Secret who was, uh, it was VP who was knocked down. And then it still went to five and in the grand final. It was also a 2-1 as well. It uh, was. The loser, you know, in that tournament, VP, they 2 0 DG, this time it's Secret. <laughs> and they go up again in a final. I hope it's going to be epic. I'm wishing for just five games. Undeniably, these are the two best teams in Dota right now. Yeah. And... Like, nothing to lose. This is probably... This is it. This is what we've been waiting for. This yep. is what I'd say 80% of the community expected. <laughs> we finally get a shot. Five games. VP. Secret. You said on the panel before, you want to just have great Dota. You don't even care who wins in the end. Like, Virtus Pro and Team Secret. These guys just play an incredible level of Dota. And looking at the draft, I kind of got what I wanted. We're both standing here during the drafting phase going, man, this is a really great counter this, and this is a really great yep. counter that. Both drafts feel like they've got so many strengths as well as weaknesses against the yep. opposition. And one of the biggest ones I want to flash up is the SF. It's no one. Finally, dude. Yeah. He comes up. His finally SF gets picked up as one counter, mm -hmm. but then he gets the other counter back. Yeah. So EG won against Ehome and Vici with their timber. But those teams picked Beastmaster and Kunkka into the Timbersaw. Those aren't real counter picks. I've been hoping for an SF for forever. This hero outscales a Timber. It's a mixed damage core. Great synergy with the Beastmaster and the Monkey King. We were thinking about maybe like an Ember last pick. But when you have a Monkey King, you need something that's hitting buildings. And that's what this last pick SF does. Secret, you know. Like Naha said, Lena's going to need to go off. I feel this hero needs to snowball. And the matchup Lena versus SF is not as Lena favorite as it was way back in the past. Is, is the Lena still able to do a lot of damage when you've got the Oracle in your in your field? Like, how do you get it all off? And you're pointing to your screen right now to see uh, no one. Yeah, uh, raise first. Up. Raise, raise first. Raise first. This what is you're going for. So this is the new way to play. And part of the reason that this matchup is so hard to read, because... You're going to just CS with Souls, Rush Bottle. We saw Sumail do this back in the past, and I haven't really seen it in a long time. This is the traditional way to beat unfavorable matchups, but it's very, like, high skill. You don't see amateur players even give this a shot. <laughs> well, we'll see if no one can pull it off. We'll uh, keep very, very close tabs on him. The landing fight phase at least has Nisha and Yamso on that top lane. So as you said, Razors to begin with, trying to make sure that mid one doesn't feel comfortable. And then keep your eyes on bottom lane where Puppy, he'll be doing the job to try and zone out Ramses. And uh, Ramses on his Monkey King, this is another signature player. And Ramses, what a great player throughout this entire tournament. He has just been on oh, fire. Yeah. He is the best player in the world right now. And I don't think you can make an argument for anyone that's not on his Dota team. Uh, Secret, they come out, they 3-0 this, perhaps we re change that up. but. Ramses has been on fire. The guy doesn't make mistakes. He's incredibly involved in the development of the team's strategies. 
And he's nasty. Yep. <laughs> nasty? This is the greatest descriptive word you can find for Rams up. You're like, man, this guy's great. This guy's cool at Dota. And he's nasty. There's a lot of words you could use to describe him. But man. Puppy uh, has taken so much strength off this. That's, a, that's an Oracle with 362 HP, but there's no aggression that will come out of Zai. But it has stopped Roger, as well as Solo, trying to get aggressive against Puppy himself. They know they just don't do enough damage to get the kill. This yeah. one thing on Dying Pickup works so well. Yeah, and the cool thing about the way Secret can play this game is, like we saw at TI, PL will become a problem. Oh, wow. In the mid game, you can deal with them, but late game, none of these heroes of Virtus Pro really challenge him. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have that like third, oh, fourth item. Lane, these timber chains, they're doing so much work. It's a 400 HP Monkey King. At least the tango is a little bit more efficient for them, but looking for another chase. Going down towards the bottom while the mid is having its own fun. We have it on our pitcher and pitcher. Thanks production for ensuring we get to watch all of it. But Rogers hit level two finally, and really, Lena, she just got a regeneration room. Top lane, one top lane. Top lane. Oh, there it is, the first blood against Pasha. We're looking at the bottom lane, because that's where the other initiation's coming in. Ramsey's dodging one of the attacks with a mischief. Puppy getting a lot more strength back. And there's not much more that Roger can do to help out. They just can't get through the Timbersaur and Puppy's so tanky. This is the undying factor. Even though it's a two on three in the bottom lane, secrets still come out ahead. This is this is undying in a nutshell, especially when you have a super tanky, sustain heavy core like Timbersaw to play off of. And look at Puppy just chasing Earth Spear through the jungle. But this is great because he wants to go heal anyway. So why not just keep tabs on what Roger's doing and ensure his mid laner stays safe? Also, no one forced all the way back to base. Yeah, he walked it too. That's a, that's a long time out of the lane. Lena will move ahead yep. in the CS. This is her going off. Yeah, and this is what one of the downsides of the bottle rush is that a well-played Lena, as mid one, is doing quite good right now, out CSs you just because you have the nulls, whereas you look at no one, he's just got a circlet to help with his last hitting. And, and mid one, when you get a lead like this, the SF will probably be able to keep pace, but you are going to win that initial trade. It'll probably equalize once we hit like that four minute rune mark, especially if Roger can make something happen here. He's yeah, he's been waiting for a very long time. Thanks to that Dire Observer Ward, they have a little bit extra information on the high ground. So even if mid one feels like he may be a little hidden, it's not the case. Roger should be able to hit the rolling boulder, but if he doesn't, then there's no follow-up from no one. Even with the level two raises he has available, they still need more damage. And I fear for top lane Pasha. He already got hit out. It's the slow from the lands and the damage that just mounts the body block. He sure actually he'll be oh no, he's not okay. He's in a lot of trouble. Nisha just has so much hitting oh. damage. And he'll get the kill onto Pasha. Uh that he that was well. It was a good idea from Pasha. He had three stick and didn't expect that last rush attack from Nisha to finish him off because he spawned the boar and he would have been able to salve in between hits and possibly turn that kill around as Nisha does not have a point in Doppel. Alas, I think he high rolled on that last hit. VP's finally realized that he need to try and change things up. Solar up on the top lane. He's going to help out Pasha and try and keep Shaman away from him. So any initiation isn't a guaranteed kill, which has happened so far. But then again, ES is also rotating. You can keep your eyes on that mid lane, but top's going to be where it's at. The Beastmaster Hawk, no one's going to be there on the right. And they could just roll in towards the Absol. Probably going to be the easier target. And in fact, that's exactly what happens. Solo sets it up. There's your kick. Nisha, he actually wanted to get aggressive. And he's done so against Solo. Supports arrive from Puppy. One decay will be enough. He's just out of range to reach Oracle. But that's why you've got the lands from Nisha. They focus that in towards Pasha. But coming underneath a wave and a half, Nisha, he feels the confidence. He's going to keep going for it while mid lane, no one has to back up to his tier one tower. Lena connecting on these stuns. Yep. He, he has equalized, though. This is still about the same CS advantage the mid one had once no one returned after being forced to heal. He just caught a few too many Qs, but this is this is kind of the way it'll go if if the SF just catches too many nukes. He's and must now, dead. oh no, wait, not. no, he started with a shock. I thought he was in range for a shackle coming in from the fog of war. Well, I scared myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a big part of this game is going to be VP's ability to create tempo. Uh, I've secret, you have an undying, you have a Rasta. Like, they can find kills and pressure all lanes simultaneously. Bottom, Zai might go for this. He was waiting for the stun, trying to get Ooh, a little bit extra life. Ramsey's one more hit will do it. He's, uh, yeah, he's got the distance. Yeah. Zai going deep underneath the tower. Well, in mid lane, three heroes once again. It's the solo setup. It's just fortunes and into the rolling boulder. And no one, the last track array will actually buy some time for Laguna Blade from mid one. He's dying to heal up thanks to all the nukes from, from solo. And this will allow Lena to survive and then turn around. Looking for the kill over on the Earth Spirit. 
Unable to get it off, but Puppy drops the Tombstone, looks for the Undying Minions. They're not in range, and thanks to the Dire Observer Ward from Virtus Pro, they know how to play around the Undying. Yeah, you're gonna see this game is gonna be secret heavy for the early mid game portion. VP, you're gonna hit a timing when you have some Beastmaster items up. You can start shredding through buildings, perhaps get a Roche. But Secret, I think you've got the Mega Late Game con uh, controlled as well just because of the PL factor. And right now, definitely looking good for the side coming out of the loser bracket just because of how much better their offlaner is doing in that sacrificial safe lane. Paj has been relegated to the jungle, which I, I this is how I think you deal with Virtus Pro as well. Shut down Pasha. Don't let him be this space maker. I would much rather play VP and allow Ramses and my carry to free farm yep. than to put Pasha and my offlaner in a 1v1, having that 4-5 or five level advantage once you hit 10 minutes. Especially when they're, they're the late game here, as like we've seen with the Terra Blade pickups. It's not like a Juggernaut getting a little bit of farm. Ramses, thanks to the heal, will be able to stay alive while up on top. They are really wrapping around as Yapsol wants to go in deeper, but Yapsol is the one they initiate in on. Once again, a quick little pop-off from Oracle, a charge down from Nisha, looking for a rebuttal support for support. The PL Blocked Illusion him. blocks him from moving through the tree lines. Sick Charge will keep Soul alive for a little bit longer, but you know Nisha wants this. A couple of illusions allowed to happen, but Oracle turns around once more, looking for a trap, but it won't happen. Especially with the here. fact that mid one has arrived in the lane. They charge forward towards Roger. Atlantis may slow him down enough to hit the last strike, and that's why Roger quickly rolling boulders away. Eager doing a good job as well. This is what the top teams do. We saw a couple of missed rotations from mid players in previous uh, games of the tournament, but when mid one moves, Puppy is already mid catching the experience. He got a full wave before no one came back, and now he's going to get a bunch of creeps under tower. This is how you want to rotate around the map. If your mid moves, someone has to get that free XP and gold coming back into his tower. With the creep skipping, they may get more than this. Get the experience in mid, but it's free damage onto the tier one. Radiant is scanning, wondering if there's any kind of rotation coming through the northern side of the river. I can tell you right now, it ain't happening. Monkey King's having his own little battle against the Timbersaur on bottom lane. Always trying to line up for the good slap downs to get the lifesteal back from everything that Zai takes out of him. You're happy with this of your secret, though. Not many offlaners, especially melee offlaners, can stand up against the Timber. This is why they have a confidence Especially to pick a when third. Timber's looking for the kills. Doesn't have the mana for another train. Uh, actually, now he does. Soul Ring arrived on the Courier, so he can stay underneath the tower, looking for another Shocker. Onto Ramses. He'll switch into a tree, but that's what Zai wants to play around. Ramses, a slap down, buying time. TP's coming in from SF. No one. Can he do some work? If there's another stun available, that's what Oracle is trying to arrive to achieve. But Zai, one raise, two raise, but Timber chained down. He is away while Laguna Blade fails to kill, but the attack will from mid one around Roshan. Gets the kill on the ES. It's so and they're good. still going on bottom lane. Zai is not out of the woods just yet. There's still triple race available. One, two, slap down. No one gets the kill onto Zai, but it takes so much to yeah, do and it. Look top, you already have a tower push coming out from Secret. This is the strength of having your off lane Timbersaw as your guardian in the, I, I call it the off lane, it's the safe lane, but you get what my meaning. Yeah. You can't pressure Timber nearly as easily as Secret can apply pressure to this Beastmaster, who is still just rotating through the jungle. Pasha, not much of a game. Your bot tower, Secret, is still full health, and you're you're in winning two lanes because the Undying was sitting mid just freely. You kill top tower, and yeah, you lose a Timber, but that's a worthy death. Is this SF? Oh, okay. He'll be fine on bottom lane, especially with TP support arriving. Uh, in fact, in, with Rams, he's being as low as he is. He should be careful. We'll get a little bit of healing from Solo. But is, is this actually more punishing? We've seen a lot of times the Dire side would just let their Tier 1 and Tier 2 towers go on the safe lane of VP. But doesn't this cramp up the style of SF's recovery? Yeah, Very well, hard to, to hold your stacks in place. It's more, oh, hang oh, on. Boy, yeah, we may come back to that point. Zai, where's the stun? There's your first control. Just hold the timber in position, allowing the raiders to do work. Solo's the one with the nuke that finds the kill. They want to get rid of this tombstone. One more hit will do it, but nope. Puppy will take care of it himself. And they still want to go down. Fortification keeps the creep wave alive. Just holding Puppy in. Two races will connect again. He's got a short range race. That should be enough to almost kill a Puppy with the decay. He'll get more life up. But it's still not enough. Virtus Pro diving underneath towers. I'm glad no one's doing... He's demonstrating what I would comment on, which is SF no longer just farm stacks. Oh, wow. But you got to get involved. And no one's doing just that. You can see how he just... Dumpsters of timber saw throughout the game, but you're concerned if you're VP. Look at where Nisha, Nisha is 2,000 net worth ahead of the game, and he has total dominance in this top dire jungle. 
Pasha's got roar, but I don't know. Can you really find the real one consistently? You're gonna have a defusal oh. soon as well. Is that it's coming already, out on the courier? It's on the oh courier. my god! This is an 11 minute defusal blade for the Phantom Lancer. Yeah, and this hero crushes PL. You, er, you, sorry, you crushes Beastmaster. But the support duo of VP have a very big problem with Phantom Lancer as well. You purge both their disables. Man, Nisha's about to go hard. I think you just shove down bottom. He links up with the Timber Saw, your big tanky frontliner. He can tank any tower hit no problem. They take a tier one, tier two, yeah. right? And you have an Undying as well. Rasta also level seven. Yapsor pops the tome. All of these arcanes. Uh, here's your initiation forward, looking for the kill. Already starting off, SF, less of Requiem of Souls, blast out. Pasha arrived, he has the roar available, but it instantly wants to push back. They do not want to roar this Timber Saw. They have no follow-up to it. The Earth Spirit is moving over. He doesn't have a TP scroll, so it's a long run. The Mass Serpent wants defense. The roar goes out the Phantom Lancer. He's so low on life, but they can't kill him off yet. In fact, Pasha's too deep in the shackles on SF. Great chain control from Team Secret. Support is there from Oracle, but no level 6. He can't keep his core alive. SF will fall and team secret get exactly what they wanted a tier one tower couple of kills and then the right to push into the tier two i don't know how it, uh, he missed the close nuke on no one he only had the two nukes land not sure how he with it could have just misjudged the range by just a few moments i don't see the replay but this is a tier two now i was surprised they dropped wards tier now one mid, mid lane mid one this will be a big pickup if furthest pro can get something back and of course with the help of the monkey king Yes, works with them to get it, but you lose a tier 1 and tier 2 tower. Mid one's still worth a hell of a lot of money and good experience. And that's the one player who wasn't involved really in the bottom fight, even though the ES was trying to be. Ramses. Yep. He's still that ticking time bomb. Once he, he's actually going Battle Fury build as well. Yeah, this is one of the ways you deal with the Phantom Lancer. Your illusions will get the cleave effect as well. And it, it you handle Phantom Lancer the entire game. If your ultimate is up and you're standing inside of it, you just can't heavily commit with your illusions because they're all going to get cleaved away but do they have the but, time do they even uh, have the space like it feels like both monkey well, and sf don't have the space on the map to farm this, this is the thing they rec i think ramses recognizes look if i itemize in this more fight like you're not winning fights right now you can't jump into an undying a rasta pl with the defusal 11. like you're gonna have to try and outscale inferior teams are gonna maybe double down on their mid game and then they, they're one fight away from a loss Yep. You're ready to take some small losses now as VP in the hopes that eventually you can turn things around and I think that decision is a good one. Even if they were to lose this game, you got to try and find that win no matter what the percentage uh, chance of success could be. The mental thing, get get a little bit of run on Timber Swords, uh, he's a long way away. Pasha has Roar up, I will just chain out because I know he's tanky but as we prove with Ice Ice Ice, oh that was the Demon Edge. It was the Demon Edge for Monkey King that would have been a huge Increase in damage for Ramses, and it's gone for three minutes. That makes me feel silly about what I just said, Toby. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it was fantastic. The, the problem is the courier was going directly over their own yep. jungle, and they're looking for kills. Puppy comes out. He's, so He's actually going to just whoop on command, Ramses. No other choice. He can't jump away at the tree lines. They have to get rid of this tombstone. Soul Roof will make it a little bit more difficult. Tombstone is gone. Zai, he'll stand underneath the Wukongs. He doesn't care. He'll chain through. Lost a lot of trees. The slap down's good, but the mass serpent wants. The trap is up. No one's getting away from this one. In fact, four, four heroes. heroes all inside the trap. These must think the false promise. He'll be able to survive and get his roar off. But Nisha, he's still the bigger hero. He wants to try and stay up, and he's able to do so. Oh, mid one. So much regeneration. HP on mid one. And maybe mid one. With the shackles up, Ramses will fall down. Mid one sticks around for it, and SF will fall as well. Team Secret. It looked like the most disastrous wards from Yapsul, but it was the greatest wards of all time. Hey, at least it was two from each team, right? Works yep. out. Ramses, he uh, he got yulled. Mid one just accidentally walks into tower range. That second shot put him at eight health. If he goes down, I think Ramses might even live there, but turns out for a big win for Secret. The other fun thing, the wards started to actually make it so there's a hard choke point on the ramp. It was so difficult for Virtus Pro to get the support up. Beastmaster, like he, he just walked away and he was with Oracle on the far side, which just stranded the rest of Virtus Pro up the hill and they couldn't walk into Team Secret. Yep. And now you're in a position, you can see the power, like the Secret third pick Timbersaw. They didn't care if this hero ended up getting countered. They have at least two people that are excellent on the hero in mid one <laughs> and Zai. Are you still and happy to see a Holy Locket on him though? He's, he's gone double yeah. braces into Holy Locket. I, I think that hero, that item is very bad. <laughs> but on Timbersaw, it's pretty good. Uh, you don't need the hood necessarily in this game. It gives you health, re it gives you raw stat, like raw HP and mana, but it also gives you a ton of regen.
It's just a super value item, as it gives Timbersaw everything he could possibly need. Plus, it boosts your health regen effectiveness. And if you look at the lineup of Virtus Pro, you're going Veil on Roger. Who's going to have a Spirit Vessel anytime soon? You've got Oracle going for it, but 2K yep. Net Worth, he's still the full uh, items away. He has the urn, but that's it. And he's going to have to buy all the wards. I think they realize they need to amplify the damage, the, the small damage they have. Because right now, there isn't enough of it. The physical damage of Ramses isn't intimidating enough. Nisha, well, he'll get his own kill on bottom lane. Beastmaster just being caught out. He's all by himself, and with that, Team Secret look towards Roshan. There is a Beastmaster Hawk inside the pit, but thanks to the Sentry Ward, I don't know if actually, if he's up, no, he's up on the hill. Nope, the Light Striker Raid, they're looking for any kind of extra information. Mid one with one more slave will get rid of that Hawk. And Vodas Pro, in fact, it's Roshan who kills it. He'll clap it down. All right, ES, he's in position. The Dire Observer is down. They have no extra information inside the pit. Beastmaster will respawn. He can TP out to the Shrine if he wants to join the fight. Roshan, 1.2k, rolling boulder in, but the body block from Puppy, absolutely perfect. And that is a punishing kill against Roger. Aegis the Immortal into the hands of the Phantom Lancer. It was a bit of a YOLO, but if it worked, it would be great. But I don't think any team just, is letting that opening uh, be there. I don't think Secret is letting that opening <laughs> occur, Toby. I've seen a many an Aegis steal. There's a few that have happened to me that I don't want to bring up, but this is Team Secret. They're playing incredibly crisp and clean, and, you know, going back to the KL Major, right? That, was, that series went to five games. Mm -hmm. VP won the first, lost the next two, but ultimately closed out and won those final two. So, you know, if you believe in superstition and coincidence, whoa! Really nice. Yeah, so actually getting caught up on the top lane. He burned directly in and Yule stepped it to do it. Just walked up and did it. Monkey King's looking for the last bit of money. He's almost got, in fact, he now has the Battle Fury. So, new items arriving for Virtus Pro, but with no Requiem of Souls. Yep. VP may want to be a little bit more careful. Observer Sentry's being planted down. That's not going to last very long. Actually, yeah, it will. The Sentry's too far away from the Observer Ward. Nisha is just unstoppable. Like, mm -hmm. He's got a Manta, he's got a Diffusal, and none of the heroes of Virtus Pro are geared up to deal with his harass. This is one of those games where Secret's going to thrive in long fights. Virtus Pro, you need to find immediate kills with your Roar, with your Requiem, and under your Monkey King ult. If Secret can bait out some of these cooldowns and keep the core of their team alive, they should be able to clean up easily once that all fades. There is, however, the mentality of Virtus Pro. So you're like saying, like, VP later on can fight. But look at their Observer Wars they place. One on the hill on the southern lane, and one's actually almost in the middle of that, like, it's mid lane just out from the tier 3 tower. It's so yep. defensive on the line drawn. And then the other two, they watch the northern side. Watch that river entrance to see if they can go into their jungle and keep that Monkey King farming up. But Team Secret, they go the other way. Smoke up, run up through mid. Sentry Ward's planted down. ES needs to create a little bit of space. And he just rolling boulders away. Goodbye, Solar. It's nice to have you back and playing with the team, but uh, you hey, look are this, definitely this, dead. This level 12 Rasta, he's going to just drop wards on the high ground. Zai's going to tank. This is the strength of Secret. They've hit a timing. Everyone's spent their gold, and they're just ready to go high ground. Now Serpent Wards are there. They'll clean up the creep wave, but the ma like... As long as these wards are up, yep. Beastmaster can't go in to deal with it. Nesef doesn't yep. want to get too close. And mid will have to blink. Still no Requiem. Actually, no, they have the Requiem up now, so maybe they can Yule Scepter and do something. But the jump forward, where's it going to come from? Monkey King's coming in through the rear, so Ramsey wants to trap him out. Thinking about oh. jumping across, he, so he'll jump he away. He cut the wave, Toby. He did. He cut the wave. Wait, the backdoor regeneration? Yep. Stopping, Verda, like, stopping the VP racks? Now Ramsey's will be punished for it. They catch him in the trees. There's that blink you were talking about going to work. Yep. They didn't clean up enough of the mass serpent but Ramsey's, he'll buy back into the game. Didn't look at this. The look at Roger. Come on. Look at Roger. He's trying to make the same play. Yep. He's going to roll in Boulder into that, however, and that's going to be with the entire team. Night Striker Ray trying to get rid of the Dire Creep Wave. They're burning off the mana of the Monkey King for the moment. He's got 11 one charges, so he can still go back into the Wukong, but can't get the full bump up just yet. He comes in closer, but this is too close. PL initiates forward. Remember, he's still got the Aegis Immortal. Monkey King, he can't afford to die. That's why Oracle has already popped the ulti. He knows how risky it is. Beastmaster, and he has the back line. They find the initiation. Hex and Shackles over on Roger. It's buying more time for the defense while Nietzsche underneath the tier 4 towers. It's just taking everybody out from Virtus Pro. ES is down. No one could commit the one charges. He'll have to she used to defend the if he wants to survive, goes for the Requiem, cannot get it up in time. It's just a death Requiem, buyback to battle, and they will be heavily committed because Monkey King is now finally doing some damage with the cleave, but still can't get the kills. They turn around, the oh, man has been taken out, Randy needs to finish the job, the shackles, it's a dieback for no one, but GG is called Virtus Pro.
They are getting worked by Team Secret. Great drop, great execution. Oh, yeah. And Team Secret looked very, very clean in game one. You can see Puppy game plan for that Earth Spirit first pick. Goes straight for the Undying. I, I love the concept that they worked with. You have all these heroes that peak and hit a power spike at 20 minutes. Um, that's not quite right. Uh, 